Breaking news, guys. Eulogy for Prince Harry. Re Reuters, November 14th, 2012. Buckingham Palace has announced World War III is imminent. MI6 and the CIA, 9-11 team of experts, brought in to confirm the report. An Iranian, Iranian terrorist, Mohammed Ben Laden, using hundreds of toy planes, has been sucked into the Apache, Apache helicopter engine intake purchased on Iranian eBay from a cave deep in Afghanistan. The MI6 report stated the Iranian Iranian terrorist had infiltrated into the chief of staff headquarters, cracking, cracking the supercomputer while Colonel Sanders was in the staff canteen. They were responsible. This is Buckingham Palace. Fuckingham Palace were responsible. Extensive forensic proof linked by an open Koran found near Prince Harry's charred remains. The forensic team made a breakthrough when it identified paper made in Iran, printed in Iran with Iranian ink from scarab beetles' wings, had spiralled from the burned-out Apache, found by a goat herder within a few hundred metres of his charred remains. England is being sued by the shepherd for killing his gird. Goat herd of six... 166 goats. A book entitled The Straw Man Burneth was recovered in the cockpit, open on page 19, indicating Harry had failed the radar warning, thinking the incoming toy aircraft were Ibis returning to Egypt, where they are worshipped as their god. Camp Bastion. Soldiers had been deployed to gun down anything resembling the Ibis. To be on the safe side, shooting any agrarians with a bent nose. I think that's supposed to be Afghani. <laughs> Is that supposed to be <laughs> Well, agrarians... Well, what comes good. on the internet? You've got to go along with it. <laughs> okay. Like most intelligent, righteous people who love the spirit of Jesus, do what Jesus would do. Lady Diana stood tall, relentlessly embarrassing the royal family, speaking out about landmines, visiting victims in hospitals, championed the fight against AIDS, cuddling little children with no fear for her own health. Her popularity was overpowering, but for Prince Charles, he was mortified. Walking behind her through crowds, visibly shaken, his face showing emotions he could not hide. He would stroll along behind her, the crowd almost oblivious to his presence, ignoring him as her admirers reached out to touch and shake Lady Diana's hand. Unknown to the general public, a dark, sinister side to Charles, a secret, he a brutally uncaring, sarcastic, loveless monster, his adultery known to just a few. But Diana had realised soon after their marriage, he was in love with Camilla, driving Diana into a state of deep depression. Diana had sought compassion from James Hewitt. Her affair was punishable by beheading, which is still the prerogative of the royals. But danger lurked from a more sinister force, the corporate world, her straw man account. 1981, Yahweh worked for an electrical contractor in Sacramento. He had been sent via the IBEW union to wire up cash registers. Each time a customer paid at the cash register, the purchased product is reordered and credit card approved. The manufacturer or supplier would instantly receive the sale, begin the resupply process and often be loaded into a truck for resupply or home delivery. Items like lounges, refrigerators, etc. are heavy items. In this case, it was Sears Roebuck, the company actually owned by the Encyclopedia Britannica. Now, they own the Encyclopedia Britannica. They own it. Oh, Sears, sorry, take it all back, guys. So, Sears Roebuck own Encyclopedia Britannica. Now, Yahweh's hobby since 1967 was actually reading the Britannica. In it, he discovered the details of the beheading of Charles I. However, no surprise, they had changed the day from a Saturday to a Wednesday. Suspicious, they were 
rewriting history, I discovered the Zionists had changed many things. King Charles was beheaded on a Saturday, January the 30th, 1649. Yahweh was reborn 107726 days after his murder. And as the most school children are aware, the number 1077.26 in feet is the diagonal of the completed Great Pyramid in Egypt. And Yahweh says he's going to digress for a moment. Now, this could lead us off into Never Never Land. Okay. Because you're totally unaware. Oh, it. yeah. I, I'm, I'm reading this for the first time, guys. So, you know, if I get this look on my face, it's because he's gone off. All right. Well, I'm a bit off. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Totally. All right. Yahweh's parents owned a house. The address is number 7 Travone Street. Oh, I think Street, I should get Sydney. something. Go ahead. Oh, keep going? All right. The family of Yahweh himself, Jesus, came from Cornwall, England. In fact, the tin mines were owned by Joseph of Arimathea. Yahweh searched and found a Travone Road in Padstow, Cornwall. It is 107726.6 miles from Yahweh's parents' home. Latitude, UK, north, 50 degrees, 32 minutes, 696 seconds. West, 4 degrees, 58 minutes, 0.754 minutes to Australia. Second. Hmm. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> He's protecting himself. <laughs> He'll show you the bruise later. But <laughs> I didn't even know. I'm like, this I don't got a bruise. All right. Uh, now, moving right along, Australia latitude south 33 57208 by east 5102.379. You right? Mm hmm. Sure, that's the right. You can go for it now. <laughs> okay, where are we now? Trevon oh. uh, oh. in Pasta in England. All right, we're, we're doing this split screen, so we're looking at uh, a little map that you'll see when Joel uploads this, okay? Just a couple little miracles coming in. <laughs> There it is, uh, the diagonal of the Great Pyramid. Right, so... Oh, carry on. Now, getting back to the Sears Roebuck and the wiring of the cash registers, each time you, or anybody, purchases a product, you carry home the mark of the beast on every item. The hidden 666 in every barcode is the fine lines at each end and the centre. Yahweh worked in Sacramento, California for a construction company installing the cash registers that we just told you about. Wiring linked to a supercomputer. It was quite complicated. They didn't have people in the uh, union hall that could do it. So I said, yeah, right, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And that was how I learned about the... Mark of the Beast. Mark of the Beast. Now this alerted to Yahweh how the matrix of the system worked, scanning credit cards for payment, MasterCard pockets 5%, the computer reorders the items, etc. If a large item like a refrigerator required home delivery, the order communicated to a giant warehouse, unmanned forklift in the warehouse. Giant unmanned forklift in the warehouse. It moves to a pigeonhole bin arrangement, several stories high, selects the item, delivering it to a loading dock for delivery. This is 1981. And you'll see on the screen when um, the 666 barcode. We've uploaded on this before several times. So Now, the barcode system is owned by the Rothschild bankers. MasterCard is owned by the Queen. One could say that you, if you have any product in your home, you have the 666 sitting on the pantry shelf. Revelation 13, 17, quoting, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Seven times the mark of the beast is mentioned. The verse numbers a modern, modern time innovation. Revelation 14, 9, quoting, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, now, 149 in the Greek dictionary is a shameful thing, shameful thing, shame. 
Also, we've got reference in Revelation 14, 11, 15, 2, 16, 2, 19, 20 and 24. One can read the concordance numbers, which all point to evil, dishonesty, etc. But the telling tale is in the seventh mention of the Revelation. 2.04. 2.04 in Greek is the capstone of the Great Pyramid. And in Hebrew, it is the city of On in Egypt, the focal central point of a circle of evil the world system is based upon. We'll explain the concordance for those who are unaware of what it is directly. The next slide is the Greek and Hebrew. Now in Greek, 204 from 206 and 1137, belonging to the extreme corner, chief corner, Hebrew 204, or shortened on, or on, of Egyptian derivation, on, a city of Egypt. Joseph, the 11th son of Jacob, Israel, married the daughter of the high priest of On, pronounced O. Her name, Asnath, is numbered 621, and time is based on that number. How? The moon is the timepiece of celestial time. A lunation being 29.53052 days. And as such, the moon confirms time or moon cycles between his birth as Jesus and his rebirth today. The dates, June 17th, 2 BC and January the 11th, 1944. 24,050, so that's 24050 lunations which will be explained in detail directly. Now Joseph was set upon by his older ten brothers. They later became the tribes of Israel under King Solomon. He is the beast, 666. Six, six. Joseph married the daughter of the high priest On, had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. The ten sons conspired to kill Joseph, for he was favoured by Jacob, Israel, to inherit. The ten brothers had all proven to be evil in Jacob's eyes. Thrown into a pit, his coat of many colours was dipped in the blood of a kid goat. Shown to Jacob as proof he had been torn to pieces by a beast. Judah saved him from the dry well he had been cast into to die and sold him into slavery, into Egypt. Now the slide I'm looking at is a photograph of the Holy Bible, King Solomon's temple in masonry. A lovely picture there. And the opening page is all about Solomon's temple, he the beast. And of course it reads the Holy Bible containing the Old and New Testaments translated out of the original tongues and with the something translations, I can't read that. Um, <clears throat> original thing. Oh, former, no, and with the former translations. Diligently compared and revised. It's just so because the text changed, is Changed, totally. Revised means change. Yes. <laughs> anyway, it's the great light. The, the Bible is primarily bullshit, so don't worry about any changes and so forth. It's all in the numbers and the codes. Now, but, the temple. This is the point. From the sea to the temple is uh, 31.68 miles. Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Kings 3, 1, quoting, And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Huh. And there's a photograph, well, a picture, not a photograph. These are artists' impressions, mm. aren't they, mm. of Solomon's temple, all out of the uh, Freemason but right beside the temple is a coin citadel. Yes. It's a pharaoh coin, right? Pharaoh's daughter, right? Yes, and there's the temple of the Lord. Now. Okay. 
Here we go. This is one of the opening pages. Well, it is the opening page. The builders of King Solomon's temple for the construction of King Solomon's temple. Three grand master masons, 3,300 master masons, 80,000 fellow craft masons and 70,000 entered apprentice masons were employed. Now, the only difference between the King James Bible that you sit there being bullshitted to from the pulpit is all this is not in it. The entire thing is exactly the same exactly. as the King James Bible, except it hasn't got the reference. It just has Solomon Holy Bible the on the front, goes straight into it without any of the 80 pages about Solomon's Temple in front of it. Oh, here's a picture of the house of Pharaoh's daughter. Are you going to build me a house like that? Why not? <laughs> My goodness, it's big enough to fly an aeroplane through. Mm. <laughs> anyway, King Solomon's wife or queen. King Solomon's temple and... Wouldn't you think with all this and this fantastic amount of money they spent on this thing, building it over 12 or 30 or 40 bloody years to do it, they have a fucking name, wouldn't they? Hmm. They don't mention her they name. They don't mention her name. It doesn't exist. It's all bullshit. Yeah. This is, of course, the uh, other bullshit thing that we sent to the Queen. <laughs> all right. It's uh, Yahweh's declaration and notice of claim. To the throne of England. This was done because day. of the FBI agent that come out and he insisted that we do it, so I said, right, huh? Well, yeah, right. Yahweh. I don't, I don't suck up to anybody. Right? It's, it's all about um, uh, going down the path that others suggest and bring it on Lucifer, continuing. Anyway, a lot of publicity. She got it. So let's go back to Joseph. Joseph grew and found favour with the Egyptian pharaoh who gave him his wife, Asnath. Solomon, centuries later, married one Egyptian woman from 1 Kings 3.1. And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Now, Greek dictionary, 131, so that's 1 Kings 3.1, 131, from 129 and 4482, means to flow blood, that is, have a hemorrhage, diseased, with an issue of blood. The blood of the kid goat is why Bush, George Bush Jr., was telling a story about a goat to the school children when the Twin Towers were brought down on September 11th. Now, why September 11th, 2001? Mary conceived naturally of Joseph ben Jacob Israel on September 11th in the year 3 BC. That is why it was the conception date of God Almighty, round one. To be born June 17th, 2 BC. Uh, by the way, on the 17th of June 2 BC, Jupiter and Venus was in a very rare uh, eclipse called a conjunction. And the uh, rise above the Bethlehem horizon was 800 being 800 in the morning and 8001, 801, which is Venus, which then one minute later caught up with Jupiter for an eclipse. So this is the kid goat here. All right. Now, we've got uh, kid in the Hebrew dictionary. It's the number 8163 from 8175. Shaggy as a noun, a he goat by analogy, a fawn. Devil, goat, hairy, kid. Rough, satyr, devil. <laughs> now, where was this Bush? This is off the internet, right? Okay, there's a, there's a title of a YouTube. Where was Bush on 9-11? Get ready, YouTube. Want to hear about this goat? I always wonder what he tells. George, killed by someone in a school book depository. Satanic ritual by George W. Bush equals Revelation 9. And there he is. Oh, God. What a Thank. Sitting there, and what this video tells you on the internet is that, or on YouTube, is uh, the men come in and say, first hour's down. And he sits back and he's still yapping on about the goat. And then a little while later, whatever it was, he's told again. Now, the nations of Europe are the ten brothers of Joseph. Joseph, England, while well, Manasseh is America and Australia is the younger brother Ephraim. The name Ephraim in Hebrew means Bethlehem. So we see the importance of Joseph finally reunited with his father when the old man comes to him in Egypt, lies dying in a tent, 
blind. Okay, that's where the bullshit starts again. You've got an old man, maybe 120 years old in those days, and he makes his way over to Egypt where his uh, other sons have uh, been sent to um, buy provisions of Egypt, who uh, by then, Joseph being a smart man, had uh, stored away in the great silos corn and wheat, and they had lots. So when the famine had hit, Israel was starving. So he made the journey of 250 to 300 miles. And when he gets there, he's so knackered, he's laying in a tent and he's blind. And then he's reunited with his son, who brings along his two boys, which is the sons that are going to be blessed to inherit. Okay. You read that one yet? Well, I'll go. So we see the importance of Joseph finally reunited with his father when the old man comes to him in Egypt, lies dying in a tent, blind, blesses the we, we did Joseph, right. I did it. Yeah. Blesses the two grandsons, crosses his arms, and blesses the younger son, Ephraim, because Australia is where Christ would be reborn. Of course, uh, uh, Joseph complains to his father that you've blessed the wrong son. You should bless the older one. But of course, he blesses the younger one. Crosses his arms and put his right hand on the head of the younger. Now, moving right along, all Protestant churches are Freemasonry, all 36,000 denominations. Separate denominations, fighting each other. <laughs> yeah. They're all right. <laughs> now, Matthew 12, 25, <laughs> quoting, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. <laughs> 1225 in the Greek dictionary from 1223 and 906 is to traduce, accuse. Oh, that's what I'm doing, accusing. So the Bible, the 1611 KJV only, is a Freemason manipulation translated by 47 Freemason scholars. Moses is its Egyptian connection, then Joseph and then Solomon. It's all to do with the manipulated Jesus to lure Christians to follow the Torah of Babylonian invention. As it is in the numbering system of Babylon, it based on the number six. So when we read Revelation 13, 18, the concordance numbers imply 666, but is in fact 65516, Three score five five one six and six five five one six. So it's six 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 six. And there are six thousand six hundred and sixty six verses in the KJV with the word Lord. The Quran is also tagged with six 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 six, made up of six thousand six hundred and sixty six lessons. So the Quran itself is manufactured uh, by the same forces, uh, this time, of course, Rome. Mm. Back to Lady Diana. She'd been set up from birth. She the poor, well, she, was a, she had no idea what fate awaited her. Her affair with James Hewitt was punishable by beheading, still on the law books of the royals today, but danger lurked from a more sinister force the corporate world. Each time you purchase a product, you carry home the mark of the beast on every item. It was simply a matter of time before she learned that the AIDS virus was an invented germ warfare weapon with a patent number 46477773. Google, the US Health Department and the AIDS patent. Modern search engines used supercomputers advanced to a point they could backdoor the US Patent Office. That's how Yahweh found it. And there's a lovely screen capture of the US United States Patents 4647773 Gallo AIDS Eugenics and the Future. Oh, King Henry VIII, I just read something today. Some dis Despicable thing that he did. Oh, no. oh he. Um, we can't get more bloody despicable. Oh, well, all right. Oh, well, yeah, you can, yes, 
well, I'll read this and then I'll tell you as it comes back to me. King Henry VIII had syphilis, which Yahweh imagines is why his young 15-year-old bride found love with a young lad who was around 16 years of age. The lad was beheaded. Then as she was led to the same fate, his head was in plain sight impaled on a spear. A wife of a king is guilty of treason if she is caught in adultery. Had she become pregnant and kept quiet, saying the father was the king, the royal genetic tree was endangered. Um, just bringing back, he had a man um, dismembered in plain sight, hung. Uh, he was hung up and then... That's called, then that's called, up. It's called drawn and quartering. Yeah, in front of everybody. And I forget what his crime was. Um, it's a Freemason. Mason, yeah, something innocuous made public. Oh no, it was over to do with the... The it, he was the um, Archbishop of Malmesbury, and he was protecting the goods and implements in Glastonbury. Yeah, the Abbey. Right, that's right. Yeah. And, and he he he. It's interesting about Glastonbury and Tara in Ireland. It's uh, they have the Freemasons have been trying to get into it. Rome tried to get into them. Rome tried to take Glastonbury. Couldn't. Why? There were sixty universities, and if you're all wondering where I was from uh, early ages on, we would sail back and forth. Joseph of Mar Arithamea had hundreds of ships bringing tin and copper from Cornwall in the area and uh, going around Glastonbury, which is a matter of stopping there. And uh, that's where all the universities were. So I taught there. Now, it wasn't in India, in no. all those places. Now, of course, that's in, in the reading. That this I couldn't go by boat. I wouldn't walk across the street. Yeah, <laughs> totally. It doesn't. Now, they named it the New Jerusalem because of the rumour and legend that you had walked those hills Absolutely. on your way Absolutely. to uh, with, with your uncle. Hmm. Mm. That's right. How that happened? Now, did we... Um, what no, was that? No, the concordance. Right. Did yeah. you read the last one? I didn't think I did. I saw a 9 for Now, as said, using the Freemason Protocol of Numbers derived from the King James 1611 Bible, the James Strong, uh, you know, this is where the James Strong exhaustive concordance. We can pinpoint the date and distance from a solar eclipse to any location on the Earth. For example, on November the, November the 14th, 2012, the eclipse occurring along the 25 degrees south latitude, when you measure the distance to Yahweh's family home, it will be 942 miles. Now, Yahweh was in his crib until the family moved for 942 days. And the crib, of course, was... 105 Rothschild Avenue, Rosebury, Sydney. That was the manger in Bethlehem today. The concordance can be found in every library in the English-speaking world. There are 8,674 Hebrew words and 5,624 Greek words. I should mention too that um, between the numbers uh, 3202 and uh, 3303 have been removed entirely mm. from the... So what it's saying in there, the explanations of words, is very, very damaging to the uh, to the Bible scholars, and so they probably got rid of it. Yeah. Now the problem is the same demonic force owns it. So Yahweh simply allowed the Bible scholars to build their own gallows, and with it they interwove a demonic agenda, thinking they can outsmart the return of Jesus. But this time, the Holy Ghost, being Yahweh, God Almighty. And the next slide is a photograph of the Concordance. There it is. Yahweh has for decades been revealing how the King James 1611 Bible has within it a complete plagiarization of the Aramaic Essene Gospels. Although hundreds of years earlier, they too, far from accurate as to what he really said, most of it invented as the ancient Aramaic that Yahweh spoke, has an understanding not translatable in other languages. So how do we unmask and trap the beast? First, let's look at the total words within the dictionary. There are 8,674 words in the Old Testament and 5,624 in the New. Logic tells us that we have a math formula. Simply subtract 5624 from 8674 and 
the remainder is 3050. In other words, the Greek has less words, and the number 3050 in Hebrew is Yah, the sacred name of God, and it's Yah is not mentioned at all in the New Testament. And there's just one mention in the Old Testament from Psalm 68, verse 4, reading, Sing unto God, sing praises to his name, extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Now that verse has a value of 1057, and in the Greek is the word Galilean of Galilee, or Jesus. Luke 23, verses 5 to 6, quoting, And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean, the jurisdiction of Herod, so he was sent to him for judgment. The number 8674 times a solar year of 365.2424 days is 3168112. So, well, all ancient languages have alphabets that are numbers. An example is the Great Pyramid. It is 454.5 feet high. Or the Book of Isaiah tells us where it is and how high in pyramid inches using just 30 Hebrew words. Its base laid out at 36524.24 equals 100 years if each inch were a day. So it's only read from the 100-year uh, period, or slightly less than that, that uh, scholars have been wondering that this is a Bible in stone because of the accuracy and the numbers, etc. And it's been studied for 400 years. However, the, uh, the base is 36524.24, which is a period of time which wasn't used in those days. They had a 360-day calendar, and the, this is just how it was. So the builders were these giant men. They were called the shepherd kings because they looked after their people like the Lord looks after the sheep. And they came, these giant men, directly descended from Noah, the Shemite. Now, I should add, that the Jews today have reversed it all. They become the Shemite, you become the dog, and are totally worthless as a human being because you are now a Gentile. This is what the Bible does for you. No pulpit of the 36,000 churches, let alone denomination, let alone the thousands and thousands of churches in each denomination, will tell you anything that we are telling you. They won't tell you how to cure AIDS or malaria and all these kinds of things, nor well, they mention me, even as they get away from the silly old bastard because he's mm. saying he's God, hey? Oh, mind you, the dude is did in uh, Nandi. <laughs> oh, after they made a Stay. foolish mistake of letting us get up on the pulpit. Yes. Oh, we started curing people. Mm. And then we also started telling them about the uh, evil of tithing <laughs> oh, while, their families, that, while their families are going without. The, um, the guy that was in charge of the church was on a military base and he had been responsible for trying to assassinate the uh, Bani Marama, who is also a lunatic, but uh, he rules that country with an iron fist, and he got 40 years jail for that. Mm. Anyhow, he eventually got out and became... After seven years. Yeah, he became Christianised in jail, and therefore he started his own church, trying to get on the good side of uh, Bani Marama. And when he was there, he had to go down once a week or something, uh, all report. the way to Suva, parole, yeah. on his parole. Mm. So he had to drive down once a week, because... His parishioners were paying for that, so he didn't want to lose the tithing, right? He, he was the assistant pastor. Okay, there's another picky, the Great Pyramid text of scriptures. This is, which book is this from? Uh, this is Isaiah. Isaiah 19, 19, 19, 20. You've got 30 words which total the number which is up to the rejected capstone. In other words, the present uh, structure has been married, uh, measured meticulously, and then Adam Rutherford who was one of the uh, measurers of it, um, he discovered that by doing an accurate measurement, it was exactly the same as the Isaiah uh, word total in Hebrew. Now, Yar at 3050 is the missing or rejected capstone. On top of the pyramid, 5448 pyramid inches high, we add the 30.50 feet 
which is 366.012 British inches. Convert to pyramid inches, we divide 366.012 British. Yeah, divided by 1.001.06 equals 365.62. And add that to the 5448 pyramid height today, it equals 58. Now, at the time of Elizabeth, um, people like Isaac Newton and um, Graves and all these astronomers have been out there. They knew that all the measurements of Britain come out of the Great Pyramid. And there's a slide down here we'll get to, and I'll show you that. However, uh, they altered the length of the inch. So all nations have a, a system where they have the speed of light and have each measurement that they have for areas or for distances or for heights and so forth. And they, but originally the British inch was 1.00106 of the present US or British inch. The British have changed, of course, all the metric system now, so they don't want people to be any uh, wiser because people are growing up and being dumbed down with the foods and the fluorides and the pineal gland and all this kind of thing that they target so that you can't sleep or drink. Um, what they're doing is, is uh, removing any knowledge of how the young people in England would be able to measure the pyramid because they're all into metric now. And young kids just don't know the difference between or can they convert or do they care? So we have the solar year at 36524.2 according to the uh, pyramid measures. Men like uh, Bazizi Smythe from Scotland Royal, they don't take it any further than that. So it can be calculated to reveal its height with the rejected or missing capstone as follows. 36524.2 divided by pi equals 11626. Now that's the width of the antechamber, mm. which we'll get to in a moment. Times 2 gives you 5813.0069. So they're slightly out, but it's only a tiny amount. It's a hair's breadth. Now, where I live with Mary Magdalene, the um, distance around the Earth is 31680 kilometres, Lord Jesus Christ in Greek. And it's 5813 kilometres from the South Pole. Hello. Not that hard, is it? Another diagram of the pyramid. This is showing a pyramid at uh, 5448.7360. So they round it to either 5448 or 5449. Down the bottom, you see the calculations when you get to that drawing. So the base in P inches is 100 years, then it is obvious it is a prophecy in stone built 4,900 years ago to be revealed by Christ in the end time. Today we have supercomputers, laser measuring devices, global positioning satellite navigation, plus 400 years of investigation by the British and the French. Its measurements are more and more profound as we go further in time with the uh, exposure because we also get into the atomic structure of the different materials used to give an example um, the uh, king's coffer uh, exactly half of it is drilled out by a pressure of several tons of a drill that was being pushed down we're talking 4900 years ago and they drilled out exactly half its mass now to do that is an extraordinary feat so uh, what we have then is uh, measures two ten thousandths of a point. In other words, if you were measuring something, you might say it's uh, 537 point zero two one four nine eight. That's how accurately they measured these things. And they found that it's so ac accurate that uh, when these stones were put on the outside of the pyramid, they were uh, alabaster, different to the limestone within, the pure white. And it would shine and if he was on, if ever the Americans went to the moon, which they didn't, they'd be able to see the pyramid shining in the moonlight. So what we have then is, uh, they're so accurate, they say it's more um, accurate than an uh, optical grinding of your glasses, which I don't really need, I just think it's good. Okay, so we have... What the fuck's that, that? <laughs> okay, carry on. All right. Brings us back to Mary Magdalene. She's been reincarnated as a simple-minded woman who slobbers coke and chocolate day after day watching mystery reruns. 
Colombo is one of the favourites, <laughs> and uh, the other one in England, what was it? Um, oh, uh, summer, something like that. Midsummer. Midsummer. I don't know about it. Huh? Midsummer murders. Midsummer murders, that's it. We have an expert on television over here. <laughs> And now, um, she would forget, <laughs> I'd see this thing over and over and over again, and by the 20 times you see something over and over again, you probably know what the plot is, but Michelle never did. She would wait till the very end, oh, right, surprise, surprise, Columbo solved it. Huh? Oh, dear. Now, uh, you, the, the scriptures go that uh, you change, if not, you're the same then as you are today. Yeah, vice versa. I'm an asshole today, and I was then. <laughs> It was the rock of offense. So the soul doesn't change. I'm the same as I was then, the mouth from the south, Martha. <laughs> right? I'm not saying nothing, I'm bruised already. <laughs> oh, he is too. <laughs> All right, so, um, so Mary Magdalene then is the same today. I thought I'd change glasses because the, uh, <laughs> some old lady stopped me in the street the other day and said, you look better in these glasses, so I'm not going to wear the thick one. <laughs> okay. Now, needless to say, uh, that uh, Michelle's only contribution to saving the billions upon the earth is her own birth date and that of her daughter, Rhiannon, who gave birth to two daughters, each child very bright, and their births align with Yahweh's age. Trinity Lee will be 8.8888 years old, on Yahweh's 69th the, birthday. Uh, the oldest daughter, Alaska, she, um, when she was just little, she said to me, I used to be your mother. <laughs> well, there you go. Now, Yahweh and Mary, Michelle today, lived at Unit 4, number 150 Nell Street in Greensboro, Australia. The distance to the South Pole from that address 5,813 kilometres, the finished height of the Great Pyramid. Now, there's with the rejected capstone in place. Now, there's a reason why the capstone is rejected. Uh, we'll get to it in a moment, but what happened was they laid it out on four cornerstones, and each stone was roughly 16 feet by 8 feet, and they chipped fine lines, and then when you join all the fine lines up, you'd have 36524 pyramid inches around, so it gives you 100 years if we, each inch represents a day, which it does. And then they shrunk it in by 286.1. So when we get into the pyramid, which I haven't done too much here, uh, everything is based on the displacement factor. No pyramidologist talks about it. They have no idea. If they talk about it, they're identifying me. This is a problem. You'll never get a book printed if you say anything about what I'm saying. Protocol 14, we Absolutely. shall forbid Christ. Absolutely. Okay, now getting back to Mary Magdalene, Michelle. She I was... wasn't quite... Oh, weren't you down? Sorry. So, <laughs> the 286.1 number is the key identifies Solomon as 6666. And we'll get to that shortly. But my uh, stepdaughter, uh, Rhiannon, was born when Michelle was 32.75 years old. Uh, my youngest daughter, Nicole. From your first wife. From my first wife, don't remind me. 777 seven, seven days younger than Nicole. And my eldest daughter from uh, Ireland was 11.626 years older than Rihanna. So we have now the 11626 number. We have, that is the width of the antechamber, 11. 6.26. Now, what you've got is your genetic door, and that is the antechamber. Unless you can get through that and make it absolutely 100% slam dunk, then this is what I had to do. So I had to find these people because Michelle is 11.62. No, yes, 11.62.6 days younger than I, and I married Eileen, my first wife, when I was that number in weeks, 1162.6 years. Um, Sorry, 1162.6 weeks old. Uh, so we have these numbers. You'll see it when it comes up. And that's all found. Those numbers are found in First Chronicles 5.13. There's seven names in there. The total is 31101 divided by the seven names because we've now got a mathematical formula. That's what we're looking for. And it averages 4443. And that's how many times the word God is found in 
3877 verses, and that's the distance to the South Pole from the maternity ward where I was born. Not that hard, is it? No. There's the age she was there, 32750, but this time it is a difference in time between the first solar eclipse, we're represented by the top of the first layer of masonry, to the 222nd, which is the 14th of November uh, this year. And the distance from both of those, uh, sorry, from the last one, is uh, 942 miles, because you calculate from the angle where the moon is sharpest crossing the sun at the 25 degree latitude south and 25 degree latitude north. Now what happens is this, the sun goes like that roughly. The moon is either coming up or going down, depending on the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, but where it crosses is quite an acute angle, so it, you get a very, very accurate point. The reason we go for 25 there is because the Great Pyramid is that number in years wide. So it's got 913106, which is the fullness of the pyramid that's laid out on the chipped stones on the corners. So we've got 9131.06 divided by the solar year, and it gives you 25 years. And that number repeats itself uh, quite a long way through. The uh, 25th of January 1944 was in the northern hemisphere, just below the pyramid, on the 25 degree latitude, and it was 8,888.8 miles. Now I say this thing quite openly. Get it and do it yourself. I'll give you all the numbers. I'll even send you the software. You can do it yourself. It's called Magellan, which is one of the largest GPS manufacturers in the world, and they're accurate to within a few meters. I guarantee you that the one that Prince Harry would be flying on, it'd be guaranteed that it would be accurate to within half an inch. Not that hard, is it? So there it is there. On this next one, we show Google Earth. We see New Zealand is 888 miles from the top of the latitude of the North Island to the South Island. That is Jesus in Greek geometry. It shows the maternity ward to the South Pole, 3877 nautical miles, which is God, verse total, and in it is 4443 times the word God is found. So in other words, in some verses, it's mentioned more than once. Now we have, from my birth, crib, I can still remember being trapped in it, 3875 nautical miles, to the South Pole, and that is the word comforter. Now, the comforter is the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is Yahweh, Jesus' ghost, which is the soul of myself, and that is why manifesting today, you've got Yahweh that wants you. So, Freemasonry, watch it. Okay, now we've got also the 581, three kilometres from Nell Street to the South Pole. Don't measure with Google Earth. It's bullshit. Here we have um, time spans. We have the uh, uh, distance from that solar eclipse and the uh, days that I spent incarcerated there in this uh, little... I remember kicking the shit out of the slats, you know, trying to get out. This is a little cot. True. Mm -hmm. I broke them out. Uh, my mother was great at that. She's dumping and leave it there for days. No heart. Anyhow... Uh, 942 days old, we moved. It was the 222nd day of the year. It was the 10th of August in 1946. So on the date, which I haven't got here, but I'll tell you, because I like doing that. <laughs> on June the 17th, which is the same as June the 17th, 2 BC, my birth is Jesus, um, the sunlight, oh, sorry, I was 888 days old on June the 17th, 1946. In case you've missed it, 888 is Jesus in Greek gematria. Didn't I mention that? No. My brother is 8.88 years older than I am. Uh, his hobbies was lazing about going to brothels and molesting children. Now, Tracy, as shown here, when she was born in Port Alberni, I was 8,880 days old, and the sunrise to sunset was 888 minutes. She was conceived, I was there at the time, uh, 280 days earlier, uh, it was the 27th of July 1967 and this Jupiter was above for 888 minutes. Now Jupiter is 88,880 miles wide. If you look it up in any science, it'll say 88,790 or something like that. It's gas. They don't want to mention the 888 number. Okay. Where are we up to? 
Next slide is uh, I married Ireland. I showed you what I was talking before. I was 1162.4, or it's actually four days of seven days. So that's how they do it. So it's 1162.6. That is in uh, uh, days 8138. Um, below that, we've got Michelle, who is 1163. That's all we can do, but when you do the hours that she was born, it's actually 1162.6 days between her birth and my birth. Then on the uh, other side, we've got Rhiannon, her daughter, born on the 20th of December in Geelong. The sunlight was 888 minutes for Geelong. And um, we have May the 4th, 1968, which is my eldest daughter, born in Port Alberni, Canada, on Vancouver Island. Sunrise to sunset was 888 minutes. It is 606 and 5 and if days. And if you multiply that by four, it gives you 2424, which is Jesus in the Greek concordance. It's not that hard, is it? So although showing thousands of miracles, not one member of my family believed anything I revealed and in fact made a joke of it. I was totally stunned and have been and still am by their stupidity. Here's the uh, antechamber, little circle on the left is a 116.26 wide. And there's a king chamber on the right. And you'll see that where the coffer is, it's 5813 from the wall on both sides. So I'm saying the length of the antechamber, 116.26, and it's going to 0 .03, uh, 0 0.03, rather, uh, pyramid inches, is equal to the diameter of a circle whose circumference is 365.24, and they go to 235p inches. So the Great Pyramid is so accurate it defies modern understanding. Its owner's media promotes it as a tomb of a pharaoh built by hapless Egyptians, uh, peasant farmers. This is so stupid a notion that truth of ancient historians speak of giant white skinned men, seven feet tall, long hair, blue eyes, invaded Egypt and with simply the power of their minds overcame the Egyptians. Now, Kukul Khan in South America and up through into the Yucatan there's pyramids built down there. They were also built, according to the natives, which I've spoken to, by this huge seven-foot-tall, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, um, led by a man who had silver hair. We've heard that before. <laughs> blue eyes. Uh, it wasn't that big. It was about six foot two and two hundred twenty-two pounds, I believe. Seventy-four point eight inches. Now, if you take my height and multiply it by the my year I was born, that is the height of the pyramid. You got nineteen forty-four times my height. Which is what? 74.8. 74.8. 0.83. 0.83. Times, my, times that, it gives you the height of the pyramid. So 1944 times my height. There are 222 truths in the Bible, and there's 222 wisdoms. And that's how many times, well, that's my body weight, especially in Canada, and I can go and get on the scale right now. And the which time we did last you were week. Born. The, the time I was born in the morning, my mother was very, very um, fanatical. She was indeed font of numbers, could name every racehorse that won a race and uh, what the jockey wore and what kind of weather was, and she was brilliant. In fact, the funny thing happened, she would come home with 25 cent bets and she'd come up with two or three hundred dollars a time. So I thought, I'll follow her up the street. Whatever she bets on, I'll put a hundred bucks on her, right? come up with a fortune. She lost every race. The one that he put <laughs> the, the, one, on. the one I placed the bets on, everything lost, right? So we have angelic powers working against me. <laughs> Carry on, darling. All right. Zionist. Where's that plastic? Which plastic? Oh, oh sorry. Protection. Here, do you want some uh, coconut water? Oh. Okay. Now, the Zionists are the demonic evil, shielding truth. Just tell me when you're going to hit me and I'll put it somewhere. <laughs> I didn't I'm so sorry. Right there. It's got this bruise that. Uh, <laughs> you want to show everybody? It's still there. Probably. Is it accurate? I don't remember it. But I, oh, look, it's horrible. She's sitting beside him there. <laughs> Whack! The sharp, pointy little thing. Look, like she didn't do it with a bloody nose, isn't it? It would be able to walk. Uh, Go ahead. All right. The Zionists have the demonic evil shielding truth with relentless documentaries on how, why, for whom, as a tomb, of that the former is the truth. Huge men from Palestine descended from angels, try, demonstrated to the peasants it would be useless to oppose them. The first thing they did was close down temples and taught 
one God. Mm. Yeah. I should also mention that uh, people often say, oh, who did Cain marry? He married a fallen angel, absolutely. So mm. that's where that parable, it's a parable, right? And so you could say, well, where did these huge men, who did the, the uh, offspring of uh, Noah marry? After all, he had his wife, his daughters and or rather sons had, had wives and had children. Who did they marry? Each other? No, they married good angels. Because you could do that sort of thing in those days. That's what angels were for. As a matter of fact, the description of uh, when Noah was born, that um, his father Lamech was really, really concerned. And Lamech went to Methuselah and goes, oh my God, you should see, you know, what have I brought forth? He was actually terrified of, uh, because of the whiteness and brightness and the eyes that they describe it like uh, the, the shone, sun shone out of his eyes. Funny you should say that. My brother is actually related to me and the sun used to shine out his eyes, according to my father. So it's close, isn't it? Okay. The one-eyed... All right, now they oh. taught the one God. So one might suspect the media and governments are under some form of mind control called Zionism. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you know, I was looking at them, so... Now moving right along to the altar to the Lord from Isaiah 19, verses 19 and 20. It's a direct reference to the altar to the Lord in the midst of Egypt, its location on the border between Upper and Lower Egypt, as well as being the geographic centre of the earth landmass. That is, if all continents were pushed back together as one land mass. Quoting, in that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. Reading right along, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts. <laughs> in the land of Egypt. <laughs> for they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a saviour and a great one, and he shall deliver them. God himself. The stars are all about predicting the coming of the Lord in the end time. The descending passage of the pyramid points to the North Star Polaris. Beside it is a star called YBS 0286, which is the number in pyramid inches the structure reveals in the height of the largest chamber, the Grand Gallery. Because it is located at slightly below 30 degrees north latitude, from within the passage 300 plus feet or 100 meters. The passage is looking, sorry, the passage is like a telescope, always looking at this location. The actual measure is 286.1 pyramid inches. 2861 in Hebrew is the word espousal, as in future wife. Now, I should also mention that when they were putting the concordance together, that was a no shit moment, because it's only mentioned twice, right? So they put an S on the end of it, so you wouldn't find it. I found it. So this drawing shows you the um, uh, pointing out to YBS 2860. Um, the entrance itself is 286.1 pyramid inches off centre, westward. The uh, base shows you here when you look up close on it, is uh, showing the 36524 0.24 less to 286.1 and that's where the structure started so when you get to the top it's going to be 286.1 it can't go any higher than a 454.5 feet because that's the value in Isaiah in Hebrew in uh, inches so what that means is is if you were to fill in all the mountains into the valleys of the earth push all the land masses back together, which they actually worked this out in 1978 in a geodesic year or something they called it. Um, you would have a land mass average height the same as the pyramid. Missing, the earth is missing God, right? Which is a 3050 number, which converts to 30.5 feet. So this is um, so fantastic that um, it has to be kept quiet. Here we have the displacement factor. It shows you a block under the uh, corner of the pyramid. It's called the espousal line, which I've done, of course. And uh, it shows you where the actual structure and the 
alabaster stones, 144,000 of them with an average weight of seven tons, representing the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation um, 14, 3 and 4, mentioning 144,000 saints. Right? So they just moved it in for that reason. So you're always looking for why did they do something that was not obvious. Well, when they do things like that, it is to show you that no one can work it out because everyone who is going to try to do it is not going to have the actual um, nous to be able to do it because uh, they're denied. It's for me to explain. So the Hebrew Dictionary 2861 is the word kathunna uh, from 2859, a wedding espousal. Okay. Where is it found? Solomon 311. Remember that number, 311. Go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon with the crown with his mother crowned him in the day of his espousal, in the day of the gladness of his heart. Now, Solomon became king because his mother was an adulteress, so therefore the line was tainted. And when the old man, David, was laying in bed, in his tent or whatever he was, um, Bathsheba went in and said that if you allow the rightful king, which was a son by his uh, Haggath, wasn't it? Um, Adoniah. Adoniah was his Haggath, name. yes. Um, it means worshipper of Jah. Okay. And you'll find the word Jah in the explanation of the names, Adonai, Jah, and all this kind of thing, but you won't find the Jah except for that one time we've mentioned before. So she said that if he is made king and he was already preparing everything for his uh, anointing of the king and becoming king, crowning, she said that he would kill us both for our sins. And of course, he changed his mind because he's almost dead. And uh, he had a little lady with him that they used to lay women with him, which is not a bloody bad idea when you come to think. You some young woman, when you're feeling, I don't feel quite well at the moment actually. <laughs> you get some young woman and they would lay in bed with the old man and keep him warm, body heat, right? And uh, you have to be careful because the poor old thing might get, die of exhaustion, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we've got the espousals with an S on the end of it. That's why it's hard to find that word. And uh, he's saying, go forth ye daughters of Zion and behold King Solomon with a crown that we're with. His mother crowned him, Bathsheba, the evil bastard, in the day of his espousals and in the day of the gladness of his heart because he was happy he got to be king. The first thing he did was kill his brother. Lovely chap. So Solomon married daughters of incest, offspring of the Moabite and the Ammonite from the Lot story where he leaves with Solomon and Gomorrah, goes into a cave, his daughter's getting pissed and then he's supposed to have sex with them and they both conceived uh, at that moment. So bullshit. Right? Anyhow, yeah, it doesn't matter from which he received 666 talents of gold. So here we have the first mention of the same wording of when you read the actual verse, it's exactly the same wording as you'll find in New Testament, Revelation 13, what is it, 18. They, the descendants of Sodom, by interest between Lot and his daughters, he married 700 wives and had 300 concubines. Now the wage of gold that came to Solomon exactly the one same year were 603 score and six talents of gold. Exactly the same wording as Revelation. That's why it's in Revelation, right? Revelation is accurate. So the base of the altar was laid out on a few huge stones sunk into the bedrock, fine line chiseled. Uh, this reveals the base of 913106 per side, 36524.2400 years as days, and the 365 was when Enoch ascended. So they call it the Enoch Circle. Now, Cain built the first city. He called it Enoch after his son. So it tells you that the first is not the same Enoch. One is the patriarchs and one is this line of um, Cain. So the Freemasons are trying to make it the Enoch circle of Cain, which of course is not. But anyhow, it's all part of the number codes. So we have uh, Enoch lived the 365 years, then ascended the 2424 of that number is Jesus in Greek. And that's another mistake they make. When they do it, they call it 365, 24.237984, rounded off, you got Jesus, right? They don't want to do that either. 
Solomon is pointing to Revelation, as I said, 13, 18. And he hear his wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score and six. Now, we'll show you in a moment. I think you've already mentioned it. But the number six is 5516. The number 100 is 5516. The number three score is 5516. And last letter six is 5516. You add them all together, add them to my birthday, and it gives you the transition of Venus in June the 6th, 2004. Okay, here we are, I'm getting tired. <sighs> the builders of the pyramid, all huge blue-eyed men descended from angels. The base reflects 365, 24.24 inches, but the first layer of masonry, smaller as the massive limestone blocks, were moved inwards, leaving a space between the chiseled lines and the blocks of 35.7625 pyramid inches or 286.1 pyramid inches total. Smaller than the originally laid at 365.24.24 pyramid inches. The baseline of the blocks is therefore telling us Solomon took daughters of incest from Sodom. So Sodom. You know what I mean. It's almost dinner time, isn't it, Karen? <laughs> I'm going to hungry. Okay, so we have then 36524.24 less 286.1 equals 36238.14 pyramid inches. And then that gives us the number 3623 in Hebrew is the same word, espousal. But this time it's the husband to be. Solomon 311, quoting, Go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold, King Solomon, with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals, 2861, and in the day of the gladness of his heart. Hebrew Dictionary, 2861, a wedding espousal. The pyramid base reflects the layout, then reduced to 36238.14, that number 3623, from 361, 8. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. no wait a minute. Okay, all right. From Jeremiah 2.2. 2. Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee in the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Egypt, Sodom, and the English gematria of the verse is 2040, Hebrew Dictionary 3623, Bridehood, espousal. Hebrew Dictionary 2040, Harak, to pull down or in pieces, break, destroy, beat down, break, destroy, overthrow, pluck down, pull down, ruin, throw down, utterly. What Solomon's world today? Quoting the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in the land that was not sown. Solomon searched for wives in a land where God was not. Add the verse numbers from Solomon 3.11 and Jeremiah 2.2, it equals 3.3.3. Freemasonry. Solomon around 900 BC had become king by treachery. His mother, an adulteress who convinced David as he lay dying to pass over Adoniah, his legitimate son. Bathsheba told David he would kill Solomon and her. So he changed his mind and bequeathed the throne to her son, Solomon. Interesting story. The lady, the young girl that was lying with David to keep him warm, the only thing Adonijah wanted and when it, this happened, when he became king, he said to Bathsheba, all I want is that young woman for a wife. All I want is a wife. Why? Mm. Because she heard the treachery that was going on. Right. So Solomon was a black witch. He used witchcraft to manifest demonic spirits. After all, man, good or bad, is a being of free will. Therefore, if enough people are gathered in any cause, they can create demons and is where all demonic spirits come from. Man made in God's image can do that. So evil, the demonic world is all dreamed up by the evil of man. Of man with free will. will, yeah. So as Jesus, he said, free will is a gift to mankind, but it was given to do good, not evil. The earth is the footstool of Jesus, Yahweh, Maria, all the same God. The Trinity was invented by the Church of Rome hundreds of years after 33 AD. Well, what's that word mean, Mother? Ma, ya. Ma, ya, ma, raya. Is um, Lord, mean? God, the single, only one. 
That was in the Essenes. Now in the Essenes, it was supposed to be accurate, which is not. Um, they referred to uh, Jesus as Jeshu Maria. But in fact, it was then, by then, translated from Aramaic. And uh, of course, the Jeshu Maria was changed, or rather, the Maria was changed to Jeshu Maria. Mm. Right? To lead you away, thinking, oh, we're talking about the mother of Jesus and Jesus. No, it's talking about Ma Yah being the one the, and only Jehovah, indivisible Father, Son, Yahweh. and Holy Ghost to comfort her. Yahweh. Might as well get used to it. <laughs> now, there are 202 remaining layers of masonry reaching to a height of 454.5 feet. This is the average height of the landmass of the earth. What I mentioned. That is level with, yeah. Okay, moving right along. Naturally, when the structure was completed, it reflects the 286.1 pyramid inches reduced in its base. So the maximum height being the land mass height and the center of it means the platform is smaller than the God or Christ capstone by 286.1 pyramid inches. The masonry layers numbering 202 are all aligned with solar eclipses. The first layer represents March 17, 1923, as the base level represents December 18, 1922. On that date, astronomers set lunation zero, in, and they were in London, England. Where the moon was at that moment was below London and was 621 miles to own. The 50th eclipse, the king's chamber floor. Now, own is to do with the city, and it is pronounced on. And uh, that is where Joseph is... Um, sent to Egypt, a genuine 11 year old boy. And as he matures, uh, Pharaoh uh, finds that he's very, very bright and uh, makes him governor of all of Egypt. After he's able to interpret dreams and all kinds of things. He can do all sorts of things, yeah. right? So uh, the city of Onan is where the god of the underworld high priests were. So he ended up being given to him by the Pharaoh, the daughter, and that's her name, which is 621 in Hebrew, and that's the distance in miles from when, at 1220, uh, on the date of the 18th of December, 1922, the astronomers stopped the moon and made a location which was 621 miles from the city of Om. Om. So the base originally laid out at 9131.06 is where you do your calculations from. It represents 25 years because each P is a day. I had one today. So. <laughs> each pyramid inch. <laughs> oh. And this is to point to the 25th latitude north or south where the moon crosses at a sharp angle, which we said before. And so with it, we can actually locate within a very, very short distance. We're, we're talking maybe a couple of hundred meters exactly where this uh, totality occurred. So what we have that in the next slide is the first eclipse after I was reborn on the 25th, again, same number, on January 1944. And the last is 2012, November the 14th, Prince Charles's birthday. But unfortunately for Prince Charles, this occurs... This occurs in the Southern Hemisphere, so he misses out by about 10 hours. Sorry, Charles. Measuring from the first one, just below the Great Pyramid, is 8,888.8 miles where I was incarcerated in uh, the crib for 900, till I was 942 days old. And the last one is 942 miles from my family's home, same location. And I was there for 942 days, which is how many times the word Jesus verse total is found in the King James Bible. So they had been completely suckered into setting up the entire world for one and one to slide in and take it over. And that's what's going to happen. Yep. In this drawing here, we've got the two locations, uh, the sun line. If you look closely and if you uh, can see the latitudes and longitudes, you can plot it on your own Magellan. Just go on eBay and buy Magellan software. And there it is. It's beautiful. It's easy. So we have the 621, which is the name Asanath of uh, Egyptian uh, derivation, and it is a wise of Joseph. So here we have the devil invented Freemasonry. Okay, this goes on to uh, talk about uh, Joseph being the 11th son. Oh, that's um, 
That's mm. a repeat, Pat. Well, it probably is. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, How many it? slides have we got in this? Oh, I don't know. Okay. We're getting now, close. Moon time via eclipses determines time, which is calculated from December 18th, 1922, when England set the moon and nations at zero. The first layer of masonry is therefore March 17th, 1923. The date chosen because it was when the moon was over a precise location. And this is just repeating all about the 621 miles from London to own the ancient city no, of no, the no, underworld. No, not to London. From own to the actual location of the moon over the Earth's surface. Because what you do is you take the moon, right. you put a laser point straight through it to the centre of the Earth, and where it enters the sea or whatever, that is then a precise location which you can then measure on, on along the surface of the Earth with that. Don't use Google Earth because it's wrong. To own. Got it. It is 20.4 miles to the pyramid. So the whole thing's invented. Mm. There's no city of own. And all this kind of thing that they've got. You try and find it. It's all bullshit. So there it is there. It shows you on the very ancient uh, maps that I've got here. It shows you the location right on the, uh, the, the Nile. So Joseph called his name Zafanath Panath. Can you say that? Zafnath Pania. I don't think. <laughs> And the daughter of Pontifera. Pontifera. He's the, the high priest, right? Find that if you can. So, New Testament, Matthew 2.15. And was there until the death of Herod. So, we're talking about when my parents were coming back from Egypt. I had to stay there till Herod died because he's going to kill the baby at any cost. And I was actually 2424 days old when we got back to Nazareth. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Hosea 11.1 1. When Israel was a child, when then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. That's the verse they're talking to in the Old Testament. As Jesus, I was the king of Israel, rejected by the Pharisees, priesthood of Babylonian doctrine, which is, goes back 900 years to BC to the time of, of uh, uh, Solomon. He was a black witch. Yeah. The story goes that uh, he had been uh, acquainted with a rock carving which had all these symbols of pentagrams and all this sort of stuff, which they, it is actually available on the internet. And when uh, enough people <laughs> use these as incarnations and they Incantation. can. Is that what it is? Yeah. They can produce, because they are God in the flesh, regardless of evil or not, they are, they are able to produce demons to do their bidding. Uh, actually, Herod died a very horrible death. He was eaten with worms. And justifiably so. So we see when the British astronomers and surveyors were duped into thinking by measure of the earth, they laying out their structures from Buckingham Palace to the Holy Lands in Egypt, they could capture the Great Pyramid for themselves. They have forgotten, or they have gotten away with it, as Yahweh did nothing. So they had outsmarted God. Bullshit. They had taken the bait. When Cook sailed to the South Pacific, uh, he was um, on the trail of what they thought would be the second coming of Jesus, and they wanted to head Jesus off at the pass, because he was there on the 3rd of uh, June, 1769, to observe the transition of Venus. Now, he was with several people, but he had a Harrison clock, which is one of my relatives, who invented and won the Harrison Prize, which was £20,000 in those days. It's a fortune, like $20 million a day. He uh, took 50 years to build it. He's very, very methodical. <laughs> 50 years, he's 70 bloody years old every time he got the money. And it was uh, Green, who was the astronomer royal at Greenwich. And uh, he actually died on the trip. Uh, of all of the uh, men that was on board the Endeavour that sailed, they went to, uh, after they had, had nothing happened, in Tahiti, they had measured and confirmed Wallace, Captain Wallace, who had discovered it, uh, 666 days old, old uh, earlier, which is uh, quite an extraordinary thing. He then went to um, the South Pole looking for the alternative to Australia after opening his secret orders from the Admiralty. And he got as far as a wall of ice and then they had to use barge poles to push the ship away. And on uh, that trip back up, they had two Negro lads and uh, no one had warm clothes because I was in the tropics. Suddenly they're in the Antarctic. 
and two of them died of cold. But on the way up, um, they spotted, and he wrote in his ship's log, the Messier uh, comet that had been discovered by the French astronomer Messier, and that's why you have the Messier catalogue, because so much work he'd done. On the 8th of uh, August, when Messier discovered it in France, you add 88888, hello, Jesus number, to that date, and you get Rhiannon's birthday, the day before the uh, crossing of the Mayan calendar's prediction of crossing the Milky Way galaxy in the year 2012, on the 20th of December. Now, I've already told anyone who's been watching this, we've already crossed it. Because the Catholic Church uh, altered time, adding 10 days, um, like Pope Gregory the 13th in 1582, changing the 4th of October the next day, becoming the 5th. The, the sunlight was 666 15th. moments. Oh, sorry, the 15th was 6... I made a mistake. <laughs> Finally happened. 69 years, I'm going to think. Um, where was it? Pope Something Gregory brilliant. changed. Oh, yeah. Time. Now, the Catholic Church, being stupid, uh, when Rome was setting up time in the first place, that was having the year of the Lord, 111. And, of course, if you go back to 111 BC, they thought it was a day before. They missed out on counting 365 days between the uh, 1 AD and 1 BC. So that means the whole calendar is out by 375 days, and we cross the Milky Way galaxy equator on the 11th of December at 11.11 Eastern Australian time. 2011. 2011. And that's why people have been seeing 11.11 everywhere. Yes. And that's why the weather's been up the creek. Everything's been um, out of sorts, if you like, with the Earth. Lots of volcanoes and earthquake activity, all relieving pressure. It's all about. Now, hun. Go ahead. It's time for dinner. Oh, okay <laughs> then. Hasta la vista, baby. We'll be back. <laughs> oh. Oh. Switch it off, eh?